Rolling Stone Magazine founder Jan Wenner humiliated on Joe Rogan's podcast. Was he really humiliated? You be the judge. But first, welcome back to the JP Reacts channel where we like to take a look at the lies, corruption, and hypocrisy of tyrants. I kind of slurred that word, but we're gonna keep going. Also calling out woke absurdities. I'm just screwing up my language here. I feel very presidential right now. So. There's a recent podcast on Joe Rogan's. He's got a podcast. He just started it. He's trying to get it going. Um, I don't think it, he'll do very well with it, but we'll see. But anyway, Rolling Stone magazine founder Jan Wenner was on Rogan's podcast. I listened to the whole episode, and I want to take a look here at a, a relatively short clip with you where Jan Wenner is talking about why he thinks the government should regulate the internet. And that certainly means censorship. And Joe Rogan, a lot of people would say he completely dismantles Jan's, I don't even know if it's Jan or Jan, don't care either. But he completely dismantles Jan's argument and humiliates him. So let's take a look at the video. Then we're going to get to some thoughts on it along the way. Well, the internet's great. And I love social media, you know. Uh, but like every other industry in the United States, it has to be regulated. If you don't regulate it... But who regulates it? The government. Do you trust the government to regulate the internet? Absolutely. <laughs> just kind of like, you trust the government to regulate the internet? Are you high? Absolutely. You trust the people that got us into the Iraq war under false pretenses to regulate the internet? Uh, Do you afraid. think that makes any sense? Well, wait a minute. I would not. The people who got us into the Iraq War. It's the government. Was the, was the politicians. It's the, the government. In, in the end, yes, it's the government. It's but the whole time who else is going to regulate? But if they're going to so, be in power and they're regulating the Internet, they're going to regulate the Internet in a way that suits their best interests. No, the same way they do with the banking industry, the same way they do with the environment, the same way they do with energy. The same way they do with everything. No, what, is, what represents their interests? There's so mu you're talking about so much money mm -hmm. involved in disseminating information in and a very the particular way. World are, right now, are the internet companies are rich beyond belief. Yeah, it's fa but it's it's a disruptive thing that has never existed before. My, I, I think it exists, and I think w where we're at is where we're at. I think we need to move forward collectively as a country with an ethic that respects truth and that it appreciates opinions and reality and an and, and understanding of things that's not necessarily possible with corporate interest involved in dissemination of information. Uh, I really enjoy that very streamlined point of view of Joe Rogan's. I think what it really, what he's talking about is representing the people and how open conversation is very important. Anytime money, corporations get involved, which by, if it's regulated by the government, there's so much lobbying done by corporations for money over the government. Here's how we want you to control this. So I, it's just a great perspective there, which means I agree with it. There's no way to do that except through the government. There's no, oh, excuse me, there's no way that you can do that except through the government. Why I mean, is that? Human nature is not going to change. But the government's not going to change either. But the government is capable of change. Okay, look, the government regulates, for example, the food supply or can regulate, let's take the, the food supply. Yeah, the, the Department of Agriculture. Why have they let glyphosate safety. infestate all of our... Like, wow, okay. <laughs> so Jan's trying to suggest... Here's an example of how well the government regulates things in order to support his argument that the government should regulate the internet. The, regulum, the government regulates the food supply. They do a great job. Rogan's like, why do they allow glyphosate in the food supply, which is a known potent can cancer-causing carcinogenic chemical used in agriculture? It's very much allowed by the government. It's a great question. Kind of like a hot steaming arrow through this balloon of the government should regulate the internet. Foods. Let's stay with one thing. Yeah, but that's time. a problem. That's the I government agree. regulating. Well, then we better get better politicians in them to import better people. I mean, it's not, I guess, again, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Right. Okay. So let's take the uh, 
SEC or take the Food and Drug Administration's regulates big pharma. On the one hand, we've got a very safe supply of drugs in this country. You know, safe. They're, they're, <laughs> drugs are tested. You know, you don't get too many bad drugs. You know, farm prescribed drugs. Twenty five percent of all drugs approved by the FDA get recalled. Well, wow. like uh, another, like all right. Well, here's another example of how the government, in this case, the FDA is a good example of regulating safely. They do an excellent job in the pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> Joe, the guy's like, damn it, Joe, why do you have facts? <laughs> Joe's like, well, they have to recall 25% of all drugs. Not just that, I wanna show you something at this point. Here on, this is CNN's website, which you know we know CNN is brought to you by Pfizer. So for them to have any negative press about the pharmaceutical industry, you got to think like, it's got to be pretty bad if CNN's talking about it. And also like, what else isn't CNN willing to talk about because of their old sponsorship check clear yet? Cool. We'll tone it down a little bit. But here on CNN's website, it says nearly a third of FDA approved drugs had problems. A study finds. Now that doesn't mean a third of FDA drugs are uh, recalled, Rogan saying 25% are. But then even more than that, a th nearly a third of FDA approved drugs had problems. I think that's pretty interesting. And from my point of view, the Rolling Stone guy, Jan, uh, I'm interested. I love seeing his point of view because I think he represents the, the sort of normal leftist group think mentality that says big government is good. You keep extrapolating that and we have communism. The government not only regulates the internet, food supply, pharmaceuticals, they regulate everything. And if you've ever been to the DM, DMV and how unwell that runs, that's because it's regulated by the government. There's no competition to up-level the service, efficiency, and care that the employees give. So that's this sort of leftist mentality. I think it's important to see because it's really out there. It's one that sort of holds the doors wide open and says, communism, come in. I personally think that's very dangerous. And oftentimes when you see someone willing to sit down and have a logical conversation, which by the way, my hat's off to this Jan guy, because he wasn't getting, you know, like the fucking rageful start yelling. He was having a rational conversation with Joe Rogan and hats off to Joe Rogan. He was having a rational conversation. It wasn't emotionally charged, but you see how quickly the, the ideas are deflated when you ask simple questions, raise up simple points like Joe Rogan did. And it's like, well, damn, okay, maybe big government isn't the solution. Another thing I love about this video is that Joe Rogan had this dude on his podcast. Why do I say that? Because he's the founder of Rolling Stone Magazine. In the past year, Rolling Stone Magazine has absolutely smeared Joe Rogan. You can take a look at a headline here on Rolling Stone, how Joe Rogan became a cheerleader for or, horse medication. It's not a flattering article. Another headline, Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson wax idiotic on climate change and what it means to be black. So I, I love the open-mindedness that Joe Rogan has where he still appears to be all about connection, not division. Because it could, you, you could easily say like, oh, well, you started Rolling Stone, but look at what Rolling Stone, what they've done to me. They've smeared me and it hasn't been true. But Rogan says, no, let's have a conversation. And side note on that conversation, I really enjoyed it. The, the first part of it, uh, Jan was telling these stories about his friendship with Hunter S. Thompson, the writer, and really fascinating. And then midway through the conversation, Jan got pretty ideological about his leftist views. And then this clip we watched together is just an example of his ideological leftist views. And um, you, you saw how Rogan interacted with that. And then the, the last question is, was Jan Wenner humiliated here on the Joe Rogan podcast? I don't think so. Here's why. 
First off, Joe Rogan, he's certainly not out to humiliate him. He was out to have a conversation ever inching closer towards the truth of the matter. I don't think Rogan at all maliciously wants to attack a guest and humiliate them. The other reason why I don't think Jan was humiliated is it takes humility to become humiliated. I think in the best circumstances, whenever you or I are humiliated, it's in our best interest because we come from a place of either arrogance, entitlement, ideological thoughts, and without really seeing our own blind spots, we, we profess them as though they're true. And when they're deflated, that can feel humiliating. And guess what? That's good because we just lost some of our own hot air. But the thing it takes to be humiliated is humility. And humility means I'm open to seeing how I'm wrong. I'm open to see how I'm not always right. I, I'm open to see my blind spots, how sometimes I'm an idiot, how sometimes I'm arrogant. It takes a lot of humility to be open to that. A lot of people don't do that because humility can feel dangerous. So we get protected. Instead of humility, we have arrogance. We have righteousness. We have division. Divide against those who might humiliate me. We do that because it sucks to be humiliated. It doesn't feel good. But when we're in a vulnerable state going after genuine connection and truth, we're willing to be humiliated because it's in our best interest when we have a blind spot and when we can do things a better way. After we humble, we have humility, then we're humiliated, it sucks. After we get over that feeling, then we've learned something and we can show up a little bit better, a little bit more accurate with whatever the truth of the matter is that we're trying to get at. And I don't think Jan really showed up with much humility and that's not a character knock, it's just he didn't really seem willing to see many of his blind spots and I'm sure the guy has great perspectives on certain things but this particular piece on why the government should regulate the internet it didn't seem to really hold up uh, it didn't really hold water when we tested it or Mr. Rogan tested it and with that said I hope you've enjoyed this video of Joe Rogan and Jan Wenner having their conversation over should the government regulate the internet and as always, please stay free, my friends.